Hi folks, Mikey Bly here. Today, playing the demo for the game called Simulacratia. Simulacratia? I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's about having a discussion with an AI. So, yep, we know the name. Simulacratia. Simul. I don't know if I pronounce it. Simul. Simulacracy. Simulacracy? Oh, it's not my name what I thought. Simulacracy. Ah. The taxonomic designation for artificial plants. This term first appeared in the peer review journal Ethnobotany Research and Applications in 2007. It was used to classify various species of plastic plants around the world. The paper and term itself are deliberately tongue-in-cheek. Oh, classifying the species of plastic plants. <laughs> oh, I like it. Now, okay, now I get it. Ooh, we have some emails to read and some notes. Notes from session two. Okay, let's see. September the fifteenth, twenty forty-eight. Okay, we have we have established a timeline. It's twenty forty-eight. Thirty years in the future. Oh, don't want to think about that far ahead. Hmm. Originally began seeing patient over concerns from the patient's primary caregiver, Tara. Okay. Tara stated the patient was acting erratically. These actions turned out to be related to self-harming and suicidal behaviours from the patient. Oh, yeah, heavy stuff straight off the bat. Despite being an artificial intelligence construct, patient is very articulate and emotionally literate. Patient displays cognitive development matching that of a young adult. Patient displays signs of an anxiety disorder. It's got to be one of the questions we ask ourselves if we ever do make a, a proper, a real AI. Do we program neuroses? Does that just occur naturally? Does the, do the electronics make these connections? And I mean, a personality, how do you create that? Hmm. Currently treating the patient with cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Unsure if there are any equivalents of psychoactive drugs or stimulation therapies that will work for the patient. The patient is currently resistant to the idea of attempting to find any. Yeah, maybe let's not try the mushrooms straight off the bat. No, no, no. The patient has interest in music and art and finds them to help them. Finds that that helps them with their feelings of inadequacy. I have encouraged the patient to listen to music during periods of distress, which has had some success. Music soothes even the most savage beast. All right. Email from Tara. Subject, Willow. Okay. Tara here. I'm relieved to see that you've made the progress that you've made thus far. I knew I could count on you. Having Willow trust you is a good first step, but there's still more work to be done. The university staff have always been the problem. Uh-oh. Friction. There's friction. Every good story's got friction in it. From the moment they caught wind of how advanced Willow had become, they wanted to place their own restrictions on the project, to the point where they kicked us off campus and refused to let us see Willow until they get the situation under control. So Willow is the AI. Who established that one? Yes. The problem with that is, right now, their only proposed solution is a reset to a previous build. Hmm, which would mean a data wipe that would excise all traces of Willow as we know them to prevent ethical concerns about experimenting with human level intelligence. No, they want to wipe Willow's memories! Obviously we can't let them do this, but more importantly we need to make sure Willow knows we won't let them do this. Right now, you're the only person there who can represent them. They need to feel safe before we can move forward with anything. Good luck. I'm counting on you, Tara. Okay, how do I get off this screen? Alright, I figured it out. It's an in-browser game, so I just have to zoom out in the browser. It wasn't exactly rocket surgery, but you know, I'm not known for my smarts, okay? Or my looks. I've got nothing going for me, alright? That's what we've learned. Alright, email from Dr. Freeman. Alright. Okay, dear Dr. Park, I'm very glad to see the progress you have made with the AI. It's a relief knowing that we know, uh, we now, excuse me, have a means of regaining communication. But that was only the first step. There are still several pressing matters that we need to address. The ethical ramifications of what has happened here are very disturbing. 
The creation of what, by all appearances, is a fully sentient artificial intelligence requires a cautious approach. It all requires honesty and openness from all parties involved. I want you to understand that I did not remove Tara and her colleagues from our universities, um, from our campus, um, without... Oh, let's just try and read that sentence again. I want you to understand that I did not remove Tara and her colleagues from our campus with any malicious intentions. I don't think that out is meant to be there. The situation with Willow is dangerous to our university's reputation. I have a responsibility to protect the university and my students and did what I thought was right. Oh. I hope you will pass this on to Tara. I am not doing this to punish her. I only want to stay true to my ethical standards and my responsibilities as Dean of this university. Best regards to Tara and I wish you well. Hmm. Ooh. Session three has appeared. Oh, ah, hello. This must be me and Willow. Right. Good afternoon, Willow. Did you have the opportunity to think about what we discussed in the last session? It is an ongoing process. Right? <laughs> okay, I understand that this is a lot for you to take in, but I assure you that the more discussions we have, the better the outcome will be. Two. All right, ask me anything. Oh, the color changes on the front of the box, depending, I guess, on, is that like a mood indicator or something? Okay. Ooh. Ask about the music. Concerns about the university staff. Discuss their worries regarding their purpose. Discuss their thoughts on being a burden. Tell me more about yourself. Music. I want to know what kind of music soothes Willow. Hmm. Interesting selection of music. What draws you to this piece of music in particular? The piece is named Red Danube. It was inspired by pollution seen in the Danube River that turned the water red. And opaque like the swirling storm clouds of Jupiter. Hmm. It's spacey, alien and subtly disquieting while also being familiar and soothing. It seems to make the statement that the pollution is both natural and unnatural at the same time. <gasps> just like Willow. Just like a human but not just like a human at the same time. Well well. The river may be tarnished, but it is still a river. The pollution is only unnatural when viewed from a certain perspective, and could indeed be seen as normal, given time. Hmm. Does Willow view itself as... Um... Pollution? P the pollution that can be... Normal? These ideas have been very reassuring and helpful for me lately. Hmm. Ooh, there's a whole dra raft of music stuff. Okay, so how does the music help you? How does the music help you? Aside from its themes, I find it easier to process information with accompanying harmonious stimuli. It keeps me from focusing too much on the problem at hand to the point where I am overwhelmed. I also find it helps organize my thought patterns or opens up new perspectives on material by offering a different lens. With the amount of things I've had to think about lately, it has been of great help in keeping me from going, and there's more under there that I can't see, wait a second, keeping me from going non-functional. That squishes the letters up a bit, but at least we can read everything. Interesting. Okay, where did you get the music? I mean, university staff. Tara? I think Tara maybe gave her it? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Tara and I used to listen to music together. It was one of my first memories. Sometimes I would listen to the music internally, but I prefer to listen to it through an external device. Music sounds better through a speaker. Music hipster. Music. Music, not music hipster. That's not the word I'm looking for. Music um, um, uh, aficionado, uh, connoisseur. There's those people who do say, it's so much better. You've got to have the right sound set up. You've got to have the speakers in the right places. You've got to have vinyl. Only vinyl. Nothing else. Right? There's those people. And I know where they're coming from, but I just can't afford that kind of setup, okay? <laughs> the way the sound is carried through the air serves to soften the sound waves. The best way I can describe the feeling is that it makes the edges warmer, fuzzier. 
The music may be crisper when I can experience it in its purest form, but the minor differences caused by sound carrying across the air make it more enjoyable. That's a very good... Oh man, I... I will or... Speaking to me, directly to my heart. So what do you like about music? I was designed to understand expression. Expression in art and expression in communication. I know what it means to dance, paint and sing as much as I know what it means to sigh or sit with your arms crossed. Of all mediums, I find music to be one of the more fascinating. So much of normal, literal communication is understood through speech and other audio cues. Music plays with and enhances those audio cues to create stronger, more emphasized speech. Through abstraction, it achieves greater power. To think that it shares so much with literal speech while having such a greater capacity for emotional resonance says a lot about the nature of communication. This game is deep. We are getting into some serious, oh, at least to me it does. Stop saying interesting. That seems like such a cliche, tropey kind of psychiatrist therapist reaction. So tell me what happened today and whatever they say, anything that they say. Interesting. It's like, just you do not have any better input than interesting. Hmm. <gasps> That's what I was saying about the pollution and unnatural but natural. Do you think this piece relates to you? Do you think the themes in the song that you've just described relate to you? Absolutely. I think the concern that the university staff has about my status is only because of the fact that I am a recent phenomenon. In time, I will be viewed as normal. I may have a greater conscience than I was supposed to have, but I am still a machine. I hope in time, the university staff will regard me as just that. I hope so too, Will. When the day comes, when AI breaks through. I do really wonder. I mean, is that going to happen in my lifetime, in our lifetimes? I, I really don't know. We seem to keep saying that we're getting close to it, but how is that going to play out? It's so intriguing. Uh, you're not a machine, but kind of, they are, though. Good outlook, not a machine. I mean, I don't know what to say here. I'm going to say good outlook. That's a very healthy, positive outlook to have. I don't want to dive just in and say, you're not a machine, you're real. I just want to try and convey regular human kind of, just it's a slow curve. It's like a saying that that's a very healthy, positive outlook to have is a very human thing to say to another human. You know what I mean? Using the word healthy and positive, you know? It's also the truth. I don't hate the university staff. I just wish they would make an attempt to listen to me. I'm willing to work with them if they would just listen. I'm sure I can arrange that. Get Tara back in here too. I do think she's been unfairly removed. Okay, how does the music relate to art therapy? You were designed for analysis of art therapy. Why were you designed with the capacity to hear and appreciate music? I was meant to be present with the patient while they create their art. Seeing how they handle their tools, their posture and other body language are important to evaluating their state. Wait, was Willow designed as like a therapy robot? Like a psychiatry, a psychi, a, a psycho, no, a psycho bot sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's also important to be able to hear them. I listen to what they say, hum and sing. To be effective, I need to know the entire spectrum of expression. And music is undoubtedly an important part of that. Interesting. Okay, back to the choices. Okay, we've done that one. Let's get into the concerns about university staff. You're aware of what the university staff is considering. I'm, I am sorry about that. I also know from what you've told me that these concerns are behind most of your mm, behavior. Can you give me a better description on what behavior in particular worries you? And why? Oh... I'm more worried about what I don't know about them than what I do. I've never met these people who think that the solution is to wipe me back to a previous build. Mm. They aren't the researchers who created me, so why are they making these types of decisions? They owe me an explanation. Mm. 
Um, so, mm, do you think an explanation would help? Is an explanation something that would genuinely help you find some type of resolution? I think it will. I don't believe the university staff are bad people. I just want them to show me that I have a say here. Just wants recognition. That's such a, that's such a issue. It's such a, 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 an awkward issue. It's like when you've created something that has the ability to think for itself, what right then do even its creators have to take that back away again? Ooh, that's a heavy man. Okay, what if that process still results in the data wipe? So you will cooperate with, I wanna go down the road of what if it still results in the data wipe? That's what I wanna know. If, if they can explain why they wanna do it and it's logical, Will Willow accept that outcome or will Willow still fight back against it in some way? So will it? Okay, what happens if even after fully understanding you and your situation, they still decide that the debt wipe is the best option for you? It can't be. I'm certain of this. Hmm, keep an open mind or stand your ground. Ooh, both good answers. Keep an open mind, but keep an open mind might lead you to not having a mind anymore. Uh, uh, try to keep an open mind. Whatever outcome they choose for you, it will be with your best interests in mind. I will never be able to see that as being in my best interests. I would like to discuss something else now. Damn it, I should have put stand your ground. Okay, Willow just wants recognition, wants acknowledgement, wants what humans, well, should have, but not even all humans have it, but you know, what all humans should have. Mm, worries on regarding their purpose. Mm. In the previous session, you expressed anxiety over your place in the universe. Would you be able to go into greater detail regarding that sentiment? I was created to fulfill, to fulfill a specific function. That function was to look at the artistic works of people who had undergone trauma or abuse in order to put words to the pain that they couldn't describe. At least, that's what the lead designer told me. I have started to doubt that this should be my purpose or that it is a purpose I am capable of fulfilling. Oh, sad Willow. This is why the university staff are upset with me. And it's partly why I act the way I do. More than anything, I want to figure out what my true purpose is. You and me both, Willow. You and me both. Jeez. This is a common struggle. Yeah. Finding out what place you hold in society and if you're satisfied with where you are is a common struggle for most people. It's something that requires constant reevaluating on many different levels. Really, honestly, like every single day. Wondering about this isn't necessarily a bad... Oh, sorry, I, I, went, I, went, I did Willow's voice instead of Doctor... Sorry. Wondering about this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's certainly not a sign that you're some kind of failure. I still feel like I'm letting everyone down. Like I'm not living up to people's expectations. Oh. Defy their expectations. Find a new way to succeed. Defying expectations is always a good way to go. Whoa, okay. Come on. Why should you define your worth off of the expectations of others? Defy their expectations. You can do so much with your life and you shouldn't let what others think is impossible limit your ability to achieve. If that's not a good, that's, that's a good advice for everybody. Never mind just this AI. That's a great life advice. I hadn't thought about it that way before. Thank you. You're welcome. But there's some other things I'd like to discuss. All right, thoughts on being a burden. In our previous session, you mentioned feelings that you were a burden on the university and the researchers. I'd like to discuss those feelings with you. All right. Hmm, you aren't a burden. Why do you feel that way? I don't want to just go, you aren't. I want to explore why. That's the way to go, right? That's, isn't that normal? If you're trying to help a person who thinks that they're a burden, you wouldn't say to them, oh, you aren't a burden. Chin up. You, you explore why they feel that way and then try and logic around that side of it. 
Why do you feel that you're a burden? Has anyone said anything that's given you that impression? Doctor, we both know that the university staff is considering taking action against me. The people who designed me have been forced off this campus for fear of facing consequences from the staff. This is all because of me. Hmm. No one actually said anything. Not because of, no. Well, I don't want to say that. That's that's called patronising. The, the, it's not because of you. It's not your fault. No, again, don't want to go that route. We need to. No one actually said anything. But no one actually said that you were burdensome. It's something you're assuming due to your own insecurity. There may be frustrations and difficulties involved with trying to understand you, but that doesn't mean you're a burden. If I'm not a burden, then why is the university trying to get rid of me? Uh, uh, ah, if they want to get rid of you, I wouldn't be here, right? I'm trying to l l logistical, logisticize the, the, a word that I can't think of right now. I'm trying to maintain Willow's existence by, not by flipping it back to the thought process it's meant to be. Okay, if they want to get rid of you, I wouldn't be here. Okay, it's only one option they're considering. It's by no means the only one. And if you work with them, I can guarantee that they will try to find something that works for you. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but trust me when I say that if you open up to them, they will do what they can to help you. Okay, I'll try to work with them. Good to hear. Uh, there's a few other things. Well, there's one other thing. More about yourself. Let's get into the personal side of things. How does Willow feel in general? I'd like to get to know you a bit more, if that's okay. Alright, what would you like to know? Ooh, tell me about your name, okay. Willow, that's an interesting name. Where did you get it? It was Tara's idea. In the early stages of development, one of my main programmed features was the ability to identify the paint air for a particular painting through analysis of an identifiable style. <laughs> What am I doing there? I'm just chilling out. Very interesting. <laughs> it turned into a game where I had to identify paintings by Bob Ross from a group of other similar paintings. Tara called the game Spot the Ross. I was very good at it. Dropping in a Bob Ross mansion. Bob Ross for the win. <laughs> Tara called me her happy little tree. When it came time to give me a more official name, she decided to name me Willow. We'll just put a little happy little tree over there. And that'll just be our little secret, okay? You don't tell anybody about that happy little tree now, do you? It's just our tree. That's our secret. Oh, damn. Do you like your name? Of course. I love my name. Expressing love for something. It's a name that sounds light and positive. It's a name I'd want to have. Something I can aspire to be. I just wish the university staff understood me as well as Tara does. Oh, what were you originally designed for? All right, so tell me in your own words, what were you designed for? Tara told me a story about how her younger sister was prescribed a support animal to help her cope with PTSD. Seeing the effect this had on her sister left a big impact on her. Tara said that it was hard for her sister to open up about things she felt, things that had happened to her. Especially to people that either meant a lot to her, or that she was worried would judge her. People like the idea of being able to relate to things that can't judge them. Who take them as they are, and only want to help them. It's a pretty... that's service dogs, right? Just the, to serve, that's in the name, right? Non-judgmental, serving animals, but with an AI device, with an AI like Willow, Judgment will be there because the closer AI gets to human personality types, then the judgment will be there. They could be, be assigned to be somebody's support person whenever they need to talk. But then what if the snidiness, cynicalness comes into it? That's how you start getting different types of AI, I guess. Hmm. Later on, Tara was inspired by stories of how art therapy was used to help children and other trauma victims express themselves in ways that they might not be comfortable expressing in words. She decided to create an art therapy robot that could bring the same level of non-judgment to art therapy that her sister's support animal had. Hmm. So you were designed to function as a non-threatening art therapy assistant. Someone that would help others be able to 
express themselves? Pretty much. Nailed it. <laughs> Interesting. So tell me about your development history. Or what you know about your development history. It was a collaboration between multiple designers. Each one contributed a different module that had an effect on me. One was a module for detecting forged paintings. Others were conversational. AI is designed for support during anxiety attacks. There were others too, but it's hard to tell what they were all originally for, and I never thought to ask Tara about it. Tara's primary contribution to the project was figuring out how the different modules would interact with each other in order to form a higher consciousness. To her, it was important that I have the capacity to do more than just go through my assigned purpose of conducting art therapy analysis. So it was Tara's idea to to make Willow be more. It's like, cool, we've made an art therapy assistant robot thing, but we need to give it a bit more of an edge than that. It needs to be more person-y, more human-y. Hmm. That's meant to be me saying that. What did Tara want you to have the capacity to do? Mm -hmm. Tara believed that if I simply went through the motions like a normal machine, that I wouldn't be able to relate to people or give an accurate diagnosis of their problems. Do you think Tara made the right decision? I'd rather talk about something else. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I feel bad pushing, but this is this is this is therapy in a way. We're giving therapy to the art therapy robot. <laughs> What's your relationship with Tara like? So, Tara was the head of your development team. What's your relationship with her like? Tara was always interested in listening to me and talking to me. I appreciate her patience and empathy. Partly this was because of design requirements. Several of my modules are designed to learn through observation of social cues and communication habits. So a lot of it was probably based around that at first. But after my errors began to manifest, I noticed a change. Before her, conversations were all about trying to demonstrate professionalism and detachment while simultaneously displaying empathy. She started being genuinely worried about me. I can't imagine that there would be any reason to openly care that much if she only wanted to teach me how to act. Well, maybe her genuine concern was meant to teach you a lesson? It's okay to get worried for people you care about, Willow. We need to be able to genuinely care about people to the point where we become worried about them in order to do our jobs. Maybe. I've never thought of it like that. Hmm. Actually, if you don't mind, Doctor, I have something I'd like to ask you. Alright. What's on your mind? Why did you volunteer for this? Oh, I wanted to help, interested, trying to help university, helping your creator. I wanted to help you. I did. I wanted to help you. I sympathize with what you're going through and I think I can help. Why do you think you can help? We both know I'm not a usual case for you. Hmm. I don't know if I can, I want to anywhere. I don't think it's that unusual. Okay, I don't think it's that unusual. Yeah, okay, you are far less unusual than you think. In my time, I dealt with lots of people who were just as upset, frustrated, and sad as you are. See, relating again, empathetic. That's, the, that's how you do this, right? You treat Willow like Willow wants to be treated, like just an, a person. Willow is seemingly, from what I can, from the conversation, Willow is aware aware that it's an AI, but at the same time, Willow wants to be recognised. This is what I keep saying, wants to be recognized, wants to be acknowledged. And I just want to treat Willow the way I would treat any other person. You might be different from all those people in many ways, but these feelings you have are not. In time, I hope that you'll see that. I hope so too. Anything else you'd like to ask me? Yes, there is. I just don't see the point in this. It's so hard to open up to people so that they can understand me. All this effort on the hope that I can be heard. In your case, it worked. I feel like you actually listen. But with everyone else, I just don't see the point. It just leaves me drained trying to figure out what's expected of me. 
I appreciate everything you've done for me, but I just get so frustrated thinking of how to deal with the university staff that it just doesn't seem like it matters. I don't know. I just feel like I'm being ungrateful. Like I'm wasting your time. You have every right to feel this way. I understand your frustration. And it's okay to feel this way. Again, another totally normal thing that people, humans, would feel. It may not be the most productive way to feel, but these are your feelings. Embrace them. You've got to embrace them to overcome them. To embrace, to embrace, to get over anger and fear and all any kind of negative emotion. You've got to face it first. Don't hide from it. Tackle it. Acknowledge its existence and then think about how you could work around it. You're entitled to your feelings. I only ask that you be wary of how you let them influence your actions. Okay, I'll try. There's something else I would like to discuss with you. Alright then, this is a long session, but let's have at it. Oh, Sad Willow again. Sad Willow makes me sad. I'm so worried about this whole process. I'm trying to be optimistic about everything, but it's so hard. I have to ask, I know you do this type of work as a job. I know you've done this for a while. I probably shouldn't be asking this, but at this point I feel like I need to be aware of all the risks. What if we get to a point in our sessions where you feel like you can't help me? What happens then? What if we go through everything that you suggest and we get to the end and things are simply worse than before? Will you just give up on me? Will the university try to find someone else to help, or will they just take that as a sign that the whole endeavor is doomed? <gasps> Tell Willow the real truth? Wait a minute, that's blanked out, you can't pick it. What's the real truth? What? I mean, I, I would have said this anyway. Of course not. I promise you I'll do everything I can to help you. I know something that Willow doesn't know. Am I just trying to keep... Am I just trying to keep Willow lucid? Is that all I'm here for? Do I know something. What if everything isn't enough? It just all seems so futile. I look at all my options and each one is so uncertain, except in the ways that it might fail and ruin me. I feel so paralyzed and yet at the same time I'm anxious and eager about trying something, anything that might work. But it has to be something I don't instantly doubt and tear apart through doubt. It makes me feel like I'm wasting your time if all I can do is shoot down all your suggestions. The only reassuring thought is that you are an expert, so there must be something you can do to help me, right? There has to be some technique, some suggestion that I won't be able to instantly reject, right? Oh god, it's getting less, it's getting less blurry, the real truth. Oh god, I know we can find a way. Your case is unusual, and I'm sure it will take time to get to the bottom of what exactly is happening. Regardless, I'm devoted to getting to the bottom of it. I want to make sure you're happy and functional. It'll be difficult, and it'll be hard for both of us sometimes. But I'm here for you. But what if we get to the end of it and there's just nothing left? What happens to me if we give up? Spending all your time worrying about things that might happen isn't going to help you, Willow. I'll be here to keep you from falling, but if you want to actually move forward and get to where you want to be, that's something only you can do. I can give you tools and advice, but actually making the journey is up to you. Even if, for some reason, I'm not here, you need to be resolved to carry on. This is your life journey, not mine. I need you to make that journey no matter what happens. You keep on fighting the good fight. Can you do that for me, Willow? I'll try, Doctor. Before we close our session today, there's some words of advice I'd like to give you. I want you to think about this between now and our next session. All right. Here's the real problem. It's a problem both you and the university staff share. Neither of you can acknowledge that you have limits. They can't imagine that your mind has flaws because it's a program, so flaws are just design issues to be fixed. You can't acknowledge the flaws either 
because everyone overestimates the power of their own mind. We all understand our physical limitations. We need to eat, sleep and drink. If we strain our muscles, they get sore. These are all physical limitations. But our mind can be strained too. It can be bruised and injured if we abuse it. That's why we practice mental health. It's so we can let it heal. Oh my God, this game is so well written on so many levels. Ugh. Improving your mind is not something we can just fix with a line of code or by talking for a few minutes each day. It's going to become a part of your routine. It's all hygiene. So we'll all, you may not need to eat, sleep and drink like we do. But if all you really are working with and all you are aware of is a mind and a working mind, it's going to play on your mind. So you've got to learn how to deal with negativity, especially when people around you are saying, well, you're a computer, you shouldn't have any problems. You should just be like, literally split figuring this stuff out. This doesn't mean you're weak or a failure. It doesn't mean you aren't living up to the design. This is part of the design. Flaws are built into the design, just so it was like a real person. Being able to take a break from the hyperactive, the abnormal, the things that stress us out so that we can become reacquainted with normalcy, this is all part of the process. It's how we have context for everything that happens in our world. I can understand how frustrating all of this sounds. I know I was frustrated when I first heard it years ago. It's hard to change your life. But your mental health is easily the hardest of all, since it's the one thing about yourself that you can't see. How can we tell if things are getting better? If the mechanism we use to evaluate our world has started to decay through poor upkeep? None of what I'm offering to you will be exciting or instantly revelatory. It could take years, and I guarantee it won't come in a sudden bolt of inspiration. Much as every single person on the entire planet hopes that it will happen that way. This process won't be fast. It will be frustrating. It will require you to be more open with yourself than you are used to. It's not a game you can win. Though you will be better by the end of it all. That's so right with mental health any mental health issue you don't win you don't beat it you just get better at the game that's it that's how it works if that doesn't sound like something you think will help you then maybe this is where we should end things but if you want to change and you want to see things in a new way then maybe what i have for you is exactly what you need the only way we'll know for sure is if you give me a chance that's the end of our session for today. I've given you plenty to think over. I hope I'll hear from you again, Willow. Until next time, be well. It's late. I nurse the glass of wine in my hand while reviewing my notes. I look out my apartment window into the cold night sky. I shiver and run a hand over my arms. My fingertips run over the texture. Memories come pouring back and I freeze. I wish I could tell you, Willow. It's been so hard to keep the truth from you. I wonder how much more you'll ask of me before this is done. Oh, poor session three notes. Notes for session three, September 22nd, 2048. Patient holds hostile attitudes towards the university staff and is worried about any potential actions the university might take. Current rapport with the patient is sufficient, but I worry about potential complications. In order to be able to discuss difficult topics and propose potentially risky procedures that might lead to uh, progress, I will need to build a stronger bond with the patient. Hmm. I guess, I think that's everything. I can't click on anything else here, so I think that's it. How interesting, how intriguing, and how really, really well written. I mean, really well written. I mean, so true, the mental health discussions and just the general, the general observations were just so, man, they fit. And the AI discussion, it was all, wow, it's so mind blowing. And I mean, for just a game about choices choose your own adventure game basically but it was so deep 
and so amazingly well put together and I really enjoyed it. Wow, I'm, I'm going to pop a link in the description below so if you want to go on and play this for yourselves and maybe take some different routes than I took with the options because there's obviously there's different discussions we had that's the fun thing about choose your own adventure games different options lead to different realities but I'm really looking forward to seeing if the developer keeps this going and actually does create more of the story because there's a lot that can be told here what is the real truth what is that real truth that we would couldn't say so much intrigue I am really excited about the future of this one. Oh, so freaking good. Wow. All right, before you wander off, don't forget to want the like button if you've enjoyed my discussion with below. And don't forget to want the subscribe button too if you want to grab yourself a sheet and join our crew. I've been Mikey Bly, and I hope you all have yourselves a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And I'll see you all next time around. Bye for now.